Hey everybody, this is the Life Group Lesson for Sunday, January the 22nd, 2023. We are in the Explore the Bible series, working our way through the Gospel of John. Today's lesson is entitled, I Am the Bread, and we're in John chapter 6. I have my journal here with me today, and I want to share with you about five things that we can take away from today's passage. Before we begin, let me open us up with a word of prayer. Father, as we look at the passage in John today, help us to understand and realize that Jesus provides spiritual food that always satisfies. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jesus meets spiritual needs. Let's look at John chapter 6, verses 26 through 29. Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. What can we do to perform the works of God, they asked. Jesus replied, This is the work of God that you believe in the one he has sent. Jesus had miraculously fed several thousand people on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and they followed him to Capernaum. When they questioned why he'd left them the previous night, he confronted their motives, and he said, you're looking for me because you ate the loaves and were filled. But he knew that they had a deeper spiritual need that was not just physical. And so he instructed them to work for food that lasts for eternal life. Jesus remembered that there was a great scene of people eating until they were filled. And the disciples afterwards had gathered up leftover fish and loaves. But that food would not endure. When Jesus states the word work for the food... He's not contradicting what we understand was taught by Paul, that salvation is not from works. And we know that for a couple of reasons. First of all, Jesus said that the Son of Man will give this food that lasts. There's nothing to be earned. It's been given. And second, the work involved is to believe in the one that God has sent. Jesus explained that this is the work of God, to believe in the one he sent. This is consistent with all the other teachings in Scripture, that salvation is made possible by believing in Jesus Christ. The second thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jesus wants to fill our hearts and spirits. Let's look at verses 30 and 31. What sign then are you going to do so that we can see and believe you? They asked. What are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, just as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, Jesus is aware that the people wanted a sign. John calls these miracles signs. And after he had overturned the money changers tables in the temple, the Jewish leaders had issued a challenge to ask him to give a sign about his authority. In addition, when Jesus received a request to heal the centurion's son, he stated that people would not believe unless they saw a sign. Because Jews in the first century were anticipating the arrival of a prophet who would be like Moses, they expected a sign that they could see. And then by seeing that sign, they would then believe. And according to their own thinking, the sign would validate that this was the one that they were expecting. Now, they argue about the historical event of manna being provided in the wilderness. Moses had provided manna for 40 years. Jesus had just provided one meal. The children of Israel had eaten bread from heaven. Jesus gave them loaves that were just like what they would have eaten at home. And Jewish writings from this era indicate that people expected the Messiah to provide them manna or food. Therefore, those who traveled across the lake to find Jesus challenged him and they demanded to know if this was the work he was going to perform. 
that they, he was going to give them manna. They were interested in having their stomachs filled, but Jesus was more interested in filling their hearts. The third thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jesus is the source for the bread of God. Let's look at verses 32 to 34. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus explained several points here. Moses didn't give them the bread that had come from heaven. The Father was the source of that bread. Also, the manna of the past was not the true bread from heaven that the Father gives. Third, the manna sustained physical life, but this true bread is for spiritual life. This bread of God is the source of eternal life. Fourthly, just as the manna had come down from heaven, Jesus, the true bread, had also come down from heaven. And finally, the bread of God is the source of life for the entire world. The manna in the wilderness was just for the Jews, but the true bread is the source of the spiritual life that the Jews and the Gentiles would be able to receive, regardless of one's race or culture or economic status, their age or their ability. This is for all of them. And the people first requested Jesus to perform a sign. Next, they requested him to give them this bread always. This request proved the crowd had completely missed the point of everything that Jesus had just said. They're still thinking about the bread that they'd had the day before. And so they're missing out on the spiritual truths that Jesus had explained, and were looking instead for something that could give them temporary satisfaction at the best. The fourth thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jesus is the bread of life. Let's look at verse 35. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. These events that were taking place occurred near the time of Passover, which was an annual Jewish celebration that commemorated God delivering his people from Egypt. At the first Passover, the Jews ate a meal according to God's instructions. And then there was a miraculous crossing of the Red Sea, and afterwards, God provided manna from heaven for the people to eat. In John chapter 6, Jesus fed a huge multitude, and then he miraculously crossed the Sea of Galilee by walking on water. And then he explained that he was the bread of life from God. Now, neither manna nor bread can provide permanent relief from hunger. Jesus, though, is an eternal source of spiritual nourishment. The person who comes to him and believes in him will never hunger and never thirst again. To come to him means to be willing to walk away from a life of sin, and to believe means to trust him fully as God's eternal Son, as the ultimate and only sacrifice for our sins. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, it's the first of seven I am statements that Jesus gives in John's gospel. I am is God's name that was revealed to Moses at the burning bush. So each time that Jesus says, I am, he's connecting God's power and authority to himself. And that affirms his true divine status. And the final thing we want to see in today's passage is that Jesus offers eternal security. Let's look at verses 36 to 40 as we conclude. But as I told you, you've seen me and yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, 
but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Verse 37 here highlights the Father's role in salvation. He is the one that initiates it. John had made a similar declaration in the prologue to his gospel in chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. We cannot generate our own salvation, in part because the heart is more deceitful than anything else and is incurable. The verse also states our responsibility to come to Jesus Christ in faith. Now, we need to notice that our response is very personal. The one who comes to me. It's an individual's responsibility to come to Jesus. The individuals who come to Christ will never be cast out. And Jesus emphasized this truth by declaring he would lose none of those whom the Father has given to him. That's a great declaration concerning the security of a believer. And as we conclude with verse 40, it's a great summary of the verses that preceded in 35 to 39. It explains why the Father sent Jesus, so that those who saw him would believe and have eternal life and be raised up on the last day. To speak about being raised on the last day and having eternal life emphasizes that there's a permanence in what Jesus is offering especially in contrast to the temporary nature of the manna that appeared in the wilderness and the bread that had already been eaten and digested by the people in this story. These crowds had come to Jesus seeking bread that would never last. And what Jesus offers in return is something that will never, ever end. To receive him is to never be spiritually hungry again. We don't want to come to Jesus for just one good meal. We want to come to Jesus for an eternal feast. So as we conclude today's passage, there's a few things we want to take away from it. The first is that believers need to examine our motives in following Jesus. Also, believers find true nourishment from the gospel and the good news about Jesus Christ. And finally, Believers find security in our faith in Jesus and in Him alone. Thank you for joining me for our study in today's passage in John. I will see you in our next study.